Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, guys. Good evening. Hi, good, good, evening. Teacher. good evening. Good evening. Bye. I'm so sorry for the the wait. Everything was ready, and all of a sudden, boom, my computer didn't want to react. So, um, but I really appreciate the wait. How was your weekend? For me, it was really exciting. Really? Wow. Why so? Tell me about it. <laughs> because my husband will come next month. Oh, so your your husband doesn't live here, Brendy? No, no, he lives in the United States. Oh, okay. I thought he was here. I knew he was from the States, but I just didn't know that he was um, living in the states i thought he was living here no um, thanks god i'm leave alone <laughs> <laughs> okay so right. I, i'm happy i'm happily married but you know okay it's like i'm single so you're okay so you you have um you have the best of both lives <laughs> <laughs> okay how interesting like I'm, I'm like a single yeah mm. okay so how often does your your husband come right. i know him since no 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 sorry yeah i, I know mm -hmm. okay uh -huh. i know him i know him like uh seven years ago oh okay so he came and he came only five times. <gasps> really? That was your question. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, you you must have made a very strong impression on him. <laughs> yeah, it was for oh, for him to want. So sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> Okay. So the exciting part is because he will come with my favorite chocolate. Oh. And some stuff that I'm ordering from United States. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. What what part of the states um does he live in? Uh Dallas, Texas. Oh, okay. Okay. Have you ever been there? Not yet. No. Okay. One day. No. Mm -hmm. Maybe. You're not sure. Maybe. Okay. Well, that'd be nice. It'd be nice to to see something different. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, thank you, like I said, uh, for for waiting for me. Um, I know that um, yeah, you guys have been patiently waiting. Um, what I'm gonna do right now because I had to restart everything and um my my attendance lists are still, they're still, um, what's the word, Re, um, loading. And so what I'll do is I'll take the attendance later. And right now we are going to um, just start with the with the class, okay? And then we'll take yeah. the attendance. Um, okay, so last class, we were looking at this which was the passive, right? Remember? We learned that the passive, it can be used to talk about procedures. Sorry, it's taking away. You should be able, able to see it now, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, in this in these exercises, we're talking about the procedure, the uh, specifically the procedure of um, filmmaking. And we did this exercise last class, but what we didn't do was put them in order, okay? So what we'll do, um, I'll quickly write the answers down so you guys can remember what the sentences were.
Okay. So we have has to be divided, needs to be written, written out. Has to be prepared. Notice that the only reason why I'm using the word be in the original form, like no change the 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 the, the infinitive form, is because we have after these before be we have a model auxiliary. That's the only reason. But in this one, we're not going to be using it because in this one there's no model auxiliary, so we're going to say are chosen. Okay. Same thing here, because we're using it after the word must, which is a modal auxiliary, so that one's okay. All right, let's do this one first. Okay, so this the before filming, the first step is first, an outline of the script has to be prepared. What goes next? Next actor I chosen. Sorry? Next actor I chosen. Um no. After the outline of the script has been prepared, what do we do with the script? Then mm -hmm. Yes. So we first we have an outline. First, the outline of the script is prepared. Just the outline. We don't have a script yet. So what would it be? We don't have a script. Then the outline is expanded uh, into script. Yes, exactly. Then the outline is expanded into script. That's right. Perfect. Okay. So now we have a script, right? Because the first we had an outline. Now it's expanded into a script. So now we have a script. So then what do we do with the script? After the script is complete, a director must be hired. Mm, nope. Not next yet. actor are designed choose location. Mm. Probably we need to complete the script. Yes, we need to complete the script. We we can't we can't we can't hire anybody until we have a, a real script until we, we have it complete and everything is prepared. So this would go next, okay? Okay. All right, we need to complete the script. Okay, now we have the script, it's divided into scenes. Um, we have the filming details. So now we have to identify where we need to film, um, who's gonna be in, the, in, the, in, in, each, in each scene of the film, blah, 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 blah. Okay, now that we have it complete, we have now a real script, we have scenes, what are we gonna do? So after a script- After the script is completed. It's completed, yes. an actor yeah. must be hired. Yes. And number five so, is next, the actors are choosing the location. Mm -hmm. Are picked and custom. Yeah, 
and costumes are designed, filming can then begin. So this is obviously the last one because we can't begin filming if we don't have a director. We can't have a director if we don't have a script, right? Because what's the director going to say yes to? Like the, the, the director can only say, yes, I'm going to direct a film if he sees first the script, like he has to read the script and agree to it. So yes, um, we need to have the first, first we need to have the, the film, it's right, the script completed, then we, we get the director, then we have a director, now we can do um, the, the, the important part, which is um, deciding who's gonna play what, and then we can start filming. Okay, now, during and after the film. Okay, I'm gonna go again into the writing um, here so that you guys can understand. Okay, so we have is, um, is created. Um, so we have to film and, and sound effects may be added. Again, we're using B because it's um, after the word may, which is a model auxiliary. Then we have after the film. is finished, or if the film is finished, the different shots can then, can then be put together. Um, we say here we're gonna use B because it's after the word can, okay? Can we put together? Uh, once the shooting begins, different shots. Um, are filmed separately. Scenes may may not be shot. May not be shot in sequence because that we're using the word may, so it's a model auxiliary. Okay, so now that we have that, let's start looking at um, number six. Okay, we so that, remember next actors are chosen, locations are picked, and costumes are designed. Filming can then begin. Once shooting begins, different shots are filmed separately. Scenes may not be shot in sequence. Okay, so we got that. Now tell me what goes after this one, because this one we know is number six. So after the film has been... Yes, very good. So after the filming um, is finished, the different shots can be put together by the editor and director, okay? So remember, uh, like number says, six says, some of the shots may not be in sequence. Maybe they shoot um, the, the, the last scene in the middle, right? So uh, for whatever reason, sometimes it's because of um, location, right? So it, it so sometimes they will, they have to make sure that they're in the same location to film all, all of the scenes that are, that are supposed to be in that location to fill them all together. And then we can start putting them in the correct order. Yeah. Right? Okay, next. Soon after the film. Soon after the film. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, I forgot to write this down. The music is composed. Okay. So soon after the film has been edited, music is composed, right? So uh, we decide what, what the best music for the scene is, right? Like what emotions we want to, to convey. Um, and sound effects may be added. And at the very end, what's the very end? The, the final, final you see on the screen is created mm -hmm. by the director and editor. Very good. Okay, and then finally we have, yes. The final nice. one you see on the screen is created by the director and, and editor out of thousands of different shots. Okay, 
there you go. That's it. That's how you make um, a film. Um, so you can see there's a lot of work to do, right? It's not just um, let's get a let's get a director, let's get a, uh, actors. All right, let's start filming, right? It's it's a, it's a long process. Now, um, notice that all of these are in the passive voice because we are describing the process of something. Okay. 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 So, um, all right. So now that we've done that. Let's stop sharing because I think I should have the I should have your um your what's it called um your list ready now okay for the attendance all right so guys uh, I know that some of you are um uh, right now connected as listeners. I thank you very much for connecting, even though uh, for whatever reason you cannot um, completely participate. But just a reminder that I need you guys to open up your microphones and your cameras uh, during the attendance, okay? Um, and then you know you can you can then you can go back to being just listeners. But um, right now, you I, I need you to to, yeah, to show that you're actually here. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, Andrea Geraldine Sanchez Racinos. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Angel Antonio Ramirez Rodriguez. Present teacher. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Brandy Marilu Pimentel Prochek. Present. Thank you. Edgar Abel Tejada Benitez. Edgar Abel? It's here, but it's on mute. I know. That's Edgar Abel? Pauline Edgar Abel? A la Neces one, a la two, a la three. Sí, necesitamos <laughs> confirmación, chicos. Yo sé que algunos de ustedes están conectados, pero necesitamos confirmación. Okay. Okay, let's continue then. Eh, Edson Stanley Hernández Alvarenga. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Eduardo Jose Melcar Melgar. I'm your teacher, person. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much, Eduardo. Ileana Janet Alvarado Molina. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Irma Raquel Garcia de Monterosa. I'm here, teacher. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Irma. Jaime Roberto Aldana Beltran. I'm here. Thank you very much. Joana Yesenia Garcia de Hernandez. I'm here, teacher. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Karen Elizabeth Bernal de, de Avelar. Present, teacher. Okay, wonderful. Muy bien, Camilo. Okay, gracias. Le agradezco que se haya conectado, a pesar que no son tal vez las condiciones ideales. Thank you. Um, Marina Stephanie Arevalo Sanchez. I'm here, teacher. Okay, thank you very much. Nidia Esmeralda Marroquín Guevara. Present teacher. Thank you. Reina, sorry, yes, uh, Reina Elizabeth Guerrero Caitán. Este, teacher, I'm sorry, hay alguien está escribiendo en el chat. Okay, yes. Um, all right, Present thank you, but teacher. thank you, Reina. Okay, uh, Roberto Eduardo Escamilla Garcia. Present teacher. Thank you, Saul Antonio Hernandez uh, Torres. Saul Antonio Hernandez Torres. Saul Antonio. Acuérdense, chicos, necesitamos que abran sus micrófonos porque en esa forma no puede leer eh, chats ni nada se puede decir. Necesitamos configuración eh, auditiva y visual. Saúl, sé que está conectado, pero necesito confirmación. Ok. 
Es Susana Beatriz Abrego Blanco. Hi, teacher. I'm here. Thank you. Vanessa Esmeralda Miranda Alfaro. Vanessa Esmeralda Miranda Alfaro. Dancy Andrea Melendez Mayen. Presentes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Eh, solamente para que ustedes um, entiendan más o menos, eh, la asistencia en video, más que todo, es para dejar uh, registro para Insafor. Eh, que ustedes estuvieron acá. Nosotros podemos ver que ustedes están conectados, pero Insafop no puede verlo. Entonces, por eso es de que es importante que, que ustedes uh, puedan um, eh, confirmar su asistencia en, en el video, que quede registro en el video. Usted sí estuvo. Ok, well, anyways, let's continue. Um, Let's continue with our topic. Just give me one moment. Okay, so um, today we are actually going to start um, a new unit. Oh no, sorry, 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 no, sorry. Not before, before we start the new unit, I need to explain to you guys this, which we kind of already have been looking at, but, um, but we're going to now officially look at it, okay? Um, okay, so please tell me if you can see it. Yes, I can. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay, so do you guys remember that we were talking before, like a, a, a few classes before, that relative clauses, um, they can do two, one of two things. Um, they can either um, give you um, a definition or identify what a person or thing is, or they can give you extra information. So that's actually, uh, officially look at this information right now. So we have a dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. So these are these two sentences um, can be combined, okay? They can be combined to be able to identify who we are talking about, okay? Um, so in other words, um, okay. So in other words, this sentence right here identifies who a dialect coach is. Okay. Um, now, we are giving you already some information about who it is. And who it is, it's a language specialist, right? So we know that a dialect coach is a language specialist. But, um, we, but it's not just any language specialist because there are many different types of language specialists. So what this information does here, the information I'm gonna show you right here. Um, second. Okay, so this second sentence here, she works with actors on their accents. What's, what it's doing is that it's giving me, it's, it's being specific, what kind of language specialist. So this sentence here gives me specific information about this, about which language specialist. Okay, so a dialect coach is a language specialist. She works with actors on their accents. So this, this sentence here tells me what kind of language specialist it is. So it's being more specific. Now, um, what we do in order to make a relative clause is we combine these two sentences by eliminating the subject. In this case, the subject is she. So we're going to eliminate she. And instead of the word she, we can add the word who or that. Okay. 
who is used for um, for people, and that can be used for both people and things. So we can say a dialect coach is a language specialist who works with actors on their accents or that works uh, with actors on the accents, which is exactly the same sentence that we have next to it. Um, right here. Okay, so a dialect coach is a language specialist who or that works with actors on their accents. Does that make sense? Yes, teacher. Yeah? Yes, teacher. Yes. Do you have any questions that you want to ask before we continue? No question, teacher. No? Okay. Um, all right. Great. So I think I mean we've we talked about this before, right? But just just to actually officially see it and be able to um, to see some uh, some some sentences as examples. Okay. That's so that is when we are identifying people. Um, like I said, we can use the word who or that to identify people. Um, now, this is not, it's not something that we, we are learning here, but just for your information, um, if we're talking about things, we use the word which, okay? So which or that can be for things. Okay, which or that can be for things. All right, sounds good? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, perfect. Now, over here we have non-defining relative clauses give further information about people. So this is when you have extra information. That means that the person does not, um, or when we better said, we don't have to give information about the people or about the thing, but it's just nice to be able to have more information. So like here, we have a location scout finds places to shoot scenes. He travels all over the world. Now, it's this is not important information to identify um, what a location scout is. It's just giving me information, extra information that is not necessary to identify, okay? So in this case, the same thing. What we do in, so basically we have one sentence here. Okay, and the extra information would be this one, he travels all over the world. Now, we can't simply say, um, it's not, okay, so, like they say in Spanish, ojo con esto. We cannot simply say, um, a location scale finds places to shoot scenes, and then just simply replace it with who. We can't do that. Why? why? Yeah, that's a good question. Anybody know why? Any idea why we can't simply just replace, we, we can't just simply eliminate the subject and put the word who? Any idea? When? No, the, the question is why is this not possible? What's the reason think... why? Mm -hmm. Because we are not we talking say... about the third person right there. The okay. Third. Okay. Any other ideas? Somebody was uh, talking. Uh -huh. I, I I think maybe when we use who, we are like specifying that who who are we talking who about? Mm -hmm. We are like defining when we use who. It, that's my opinion, but I'm, I don't know. 
we can it's it is possible to use the word who with um non-defined relative clauses when we're giving it extra information that's not a problem the problem in this sentence here is that we can't put who right here we can't just simply say a location scout finds places to shoot scenes who travels all over the world that's not possible that sentence is not logical why Why, teacher? <laughs> Anybody have a, an idea before I give you an answer? No, I'm blocked. Okay. All right, that's okay. I'll I'll explain. So this sentence here, this extra information, is talking about what? What's it giving it extra information about? First. Uh, no, it's an event. It's something that somebody did or going to do. Okay, so when I say, when I say he travels all over the world, who am I referring to? To a third person. And who is that third person? He. Who? Who is he? We don't have no idea who is he. We do, <laughs> we do, and it's in the first sentence. Scout. Is it one scout? The location scout. Yes, exactly. We're talking about the location scout. Okay, uh, so, so we're not yeah, talking that's... about the scenes. If we put who, it sounds like we're talking about the scenes. We're yeah. giving extra information about the scenes, and we we're not okay. doing that. What we're doing is giving extra information about the location scout. So, in order to make this sentence make sense, what we Which, have to do is we have to put this information right after, immediately after the location scout. So we got to put it here. Okay, this information is going to be here. Because the extra information goes directly after the thing or person we are giving extra information about. Okay, and I'll say that in Spanish so that it's not, it, there's no, um, there's no misunderstandings. La información extra que estamos dando en, en el relative clause tiene que ir directo después de la cosa o la persona de la que estamos dando información extra. Entonces, si lo ponemos acá en scenes, después de scenes, pareciera como que estamos dando información acerca de scenes, pero no, estamos dando información acerca de location scout, por lo que tiene que ir aquí. All right, does that make sense now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, good. So that's why in this sentence we have a location scout. And then you will notice we have the extra information right after who finds places to shoot scenes. And then we can continue with the rest of the sentence, which is Travel. travels. Yes, travels all over the world. Okay. So the extra information, sorry, the, the, the extra information, the relative clause is going to go in the middle in this sense because we are describing the location scout. We're not talking about um, um, yeah, we're not talking about anything else. All right, so but uh, 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 I'm sorry, but you say we are talking in this case about something, not a person, and it's who for a person. Yeah, no, I'm wrong. yeah, and, and why so we are using who here for our location if it is not a person, is something a location is scout. So who the, location the, scout is. yeah exactly it's a location scout a scout what what is a scout no but i mean it's not 
it's not a person, it's like uh, the teacher, my brother, my friend. It's, uh, I mean, it's uh, a location, it's something. It's not no. somebody. No. no, because we're talking about a location scout. Location is used as an adjective, not a noun. So I we're talking see. about here a scout. What is a scout? Es we... como un visor, creo. Explorador. Como un explorador. Ajá. Es como... Uh... Is it like a the Boy Scout here in San Salvador? Mm, okay, no, no, no. Um, like a group, a group of people. For example, in football, uh, a scout mm -hmm. is a person who go to watch uh, players mm -hmm. to contract there to the clubs and that. Mm -hmm. He so, watch people, or in that case, a location of scouts watch locations to films, movies. I understand that. Mm -hmm. So at the end, it's it's somebody. It's not something. It's somebody. It's a person. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's a person. So yeah, I will. So a scout is a yeah, exactly. It's a person that is, um, he is watching other people, uh, for talent. Usually for talent or for, um. So they are. It's almost like a busca talentos kind of thing. Okay. okay. I, when I'm here, like a location a scout, I. Yeah. Okay, but I got yeah. it. But in this case, we're not talking about, he's not scouting people, he's scouting locations. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called a location scout because he is going uh -huh. all over, he is going all over the world trying to say, ah, we can, you can do this and this and this place. And so he's just looking for places where pe films can be, for where movies can be made. Uh, okay, I got it now. Okay, so the, yeah. the word location is referring to an adjective. It's what kind of scout it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So there we go. Now that we've got that done. Oh, so like I said before, um, so keep in mind that which and that is used for things and who and that is used for people. But the word that can only you be used in defining relative clauses. Okay, that is not a word that we can use in this kind of sentence, in the non-defining relative clauses. We cannot use it. That is only used with defining relative clauses. Okay? Can you give me an example? So like here, okay? We say a dialect coach is a language specialist who or that works with actors on their accents. So we can use the word that. But here, I can't say a location scout that finds places to shoot scenes travels all over the world. That, I, I, I can't do that. Okay? Not possible. Now, the other thing is that when we are giving extra information in non-defining relative clauses, we have to... Um, we have to separate the, rel the, the relative clause with commas. So if you notice here, um, we are using commas uh, to separate See? We're using commas. Those commas are there to separate the non-defining relative clause from the main information. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Teacher, um, for example, if we have um, a subject in the second sentence, a subject 
And before the allocation, for example, Alexander is a location scout and find places to shoot the sense. Now that is a the definite and relative clause. Yeah, they find because we yes. have a subject that and that right. yeah, we can say Alexander is a location scout who uh finds place finds places to shoot scenes or something like that. Yeah, then that would be defining. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's 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 not about it's not about the actual information. It's about if that information is necessary for the sentence, or if the sentence can live without that sentence. Okay, so in this case, this one's necessary because we need to know what kind of language specialist it is. It's giving me very important information to understand what kind of language specialist it is. Because there are many types of language specialists. But this one is giving me specific information. Whereas this one is not giving me specific information, but extra information. Because I can easily say a location scout travels all over the world. I can say that, and that doesn't make sense. That that's not a problem. And this this is independent of this. All right? All okay. right. Any questions at this point? Okay. Let's uh, check this out then. Um Okay, please tell me again if you are able to see my screen. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, do these sentences contain defining or non defining clauses? And so you're going to identify is it you're going to put a D for defining and D for non defining? And if it's non-defining, you have to add the commas where it's necessary. So these four sentences here, all right? Um, do you need me to send it to you in the group or do you think, I'm, I'm not gonna send you to, to breakout rooms. So you can do, we can do it here in class. Okay. Send. So did, did you say you wanted me to send it? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, please, okay. please. Okay, no problem, I can do that. Just give me a moment, guys, while I am able to send it.
Sorry, guys. Uh, it's taking a while to open up the WhatsApp web. Since so I restarted my computer. Okay. All right. I just got in. So I'm to you in a moment. Okay, you should have gotten it by now. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me. Okay, how are you guys doing? Are we ready to check or do you still need more time? Just a little bit more time, please. Okay, no problem. We can do it together, teach. We only have three minutes, so. Actually, we're gonna have to go a little bit more time because we need to make up the time that um, we were not able to um, to connect. But, um, so we still have a little bit of more time, but uh, I just wanna make sure that everybody has enough time to do it. Our, are we ready to check or do you need more time? And I think I'm ready. Yeah? Okay. All right, let's try this then. A sub person is someone who stands in for an actor during uh, dangerous scenes. What do you think about this one? Is it 
defining relative clause or non-defining relative clause? For me, it's a defining. Defining? Yes, defining. Defining. Yes, defining. Very good. Defining. It's defining. Now, because it's and a we need a comma. Sorry? And we need a comma after who? Uh, do we need a comma after who? Before the who? Before the who? Or not? In defining relative classes, do we need commas or not? No. No. I don't know. No, no, no. For non-defining. Exactly. In non-defining relative classes, sorry. In non-defining relative classes, we need the commas. But in defining relative classes, we don't. Now, what we can do if we wanted is change the that, sorry, the who for that. Okay. All right, so that's possible if we wanted, because it's a defining relative clause. Okay, so that's okay. possible. All right, next, a special effects designer who needs uh, advances, sorry, who needs advanced computer knowledge often spends millions of dollars on computer graphics. The fine. What do you guys think? I think that is non undefined. Not defining. Not defining. Not defined. Defining. Very good. It's non defining. Mm. Okay. Now, because it's non defining, what do we need? We need commas. Comma. We need commas, exactly. Yeah. So in this case, where where are we going to put the commas? Before who? Before who? Good. Excellent. We're going to put it here. And, and after knowledge. And after knowledge. After knowledge. Very good. So this right here is the extra information who needs advanced computer knowledge. We don't need that information to complete the idea. A special effects designer often spends millions of dollars on computer graphics. It's already a sentence on its own and it's fine. That's just extra information. Next, a stage hand is the person who moves the sets on stage in a theater production. What is it? It's a defining clause. Now, good. It's a defining relative clause. Okay. So what do we need then? If we prefer, we can use that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't really need anything. But if you want to um, change it, it is possible to simply say, that a, a sage hand is a person that moves or sage person is a person who moves the sets on stage in a theater production. Okay, so far so good? Yeah, yes. not defining. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's not good. Okay, and the last one, a movie produ producer who controls the budget decides how money will be spent. It's a non-defined. Non yes, very good. It's non-defining. And because it's non-defining, what do we need to do? Add commas. Comma. We need comma. to add commas. And where are we going to add the commas? Before who? Before who? And if uh, Before how? And before... Budget. budget before so yeah before uh, so after, after budget. budget after budget. budget yeah okay okay so who controls the budget comma decides because notice you can say a movie producer decides how money will be spent okay so that that idea is complete my question is is it possible to change the who for that can i do this can i simply say that 
Is that possible? Not in this case because it's not defined. Right, exactly. Remember, it's not possible to um to put the word that when it's a non-defining relative clauses, only with defining relative clause. So that would not be possible. All right. Oh, we have to change all the idea. Try to figure out how to. <laughs> we, we could, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's better just to keep it like that. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's um. Those are non-defining uh, relative classes and relative classes and defining relative classes. All right. So, um, how is everybody with the platform? Everybody's okay. Yes. Yes, I'm okay. Yes. Okay. Finish. Good. Yes, Good. Teacher, okay. Finish. All right. Excellent. All right. If you guys need any help, remember today is the last day and you can ask me for help. Um, I still have one more class after this one, but then after that I'm free and I can help you. Okay. So send me, but make sure you send me the, the, um, the screenshots and the exercises so I can, I can identify exactly what it is that you need help with. Okay. So okay. that's it guys. Take care and see you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 B